Welcome to Chase Talks, my name's Chase. Today I'm going to be talking about why the Luke Skywalker we see in The Last Jedi is the same Luke Skywalker that we see in the original trilogy. Now this is a heavily, heavily hated point of the movie among fans. A lot of fans believe that the Luke Skywalker they see in The Last Jedi could not in any way, shape, or form be the same Luke Skywalker that we see in the original trilogy episodes 4, 5, and 6. And I'm going to talk why these guys are in fact the same person. Now, starting with the Luke we see in the original trilogy. This Luke was someone of indomitable will. Despite being told by both Yoda and Obi-Wan Kenobi that Darth Vader was lost to the light and that he must be destroyed, Luke sensed the conflict within Darth Vader and attempted to redeem him anyway, sparing his life after their duel on the Death Star 2, rather than striking him down in anger or bringing him to justice. Luke never lost hope in his father, seeing the light that no one else saw. In contrast, when we first see Luke in The Last Jedi, we see a broken man, a man who is a shell of his former self. This Luke has given up hope on Kylo Ren, ever returning to the light and becoming Ben Solo once again. As we see in the flashback sequence, his failure as a teacher in that moment of weakness and the death of his students weighed so heavily on him that he chose to exile him himself in failure, much like Master Yoda did when he failed to kill Darth Sidious. I believe you can draw a lot of comparison to Yoda and Luke in these moments. Yoda had failed to see the fall of the Jedi. He had failed to save his students as he had a hand in training every Jedi in the era. And he failed to kill Darth Sidious who brought all of this evil upon them. After this failure, Yoda retreated in exile to wait for a new hope to emerge rather than join the rebellion and stand alongside them in their fight against this evil. Into exile, I must go. Failed. Luke did the same. While he was not waiting for a new hope like Yoda, he still chose to resign himself in failure rather than join the fight and attempt to kill or redeem Kylo. Just as not only Yoda did, but Obi-Wan Kenobi did as well, despite Ezra Bridger coming to him during his exile on Tatooine. To be fair, Obi-Wan felt it was his duty to protect the young Luke, from his father, though Obi-Wan could still have chosen to leave Tatooine and join Kanan, Ezra, and Ahsoka in their fight against the Empire. And I feel you can draw a lot of comparisons between Exile Obi-Wan and Luke as well. For Obi-Wan, the weight of losing not only his student, but someone he saw as a brother was too much for him to bear. Luke went through a similar circumstance, feeling that he not only failed his student, but his nephew and his best friend and his sister as well. Luke has lost himself to his failure and fears this same failure. You can see this in his hesitance to train Rey. He even makes a point to say how much her power scares him. Now, how would Luke, this man of indomitable will that we see in the original trilogy, become a man who is so twisted and stuck in his own failure? Luke's story in the original trilogy is a story of success. He succeeds in destroying the first Death Star. He succeeds in protecting the base on Hoth so that all of the rebels can escape. He succeeds in finding Master Yoda and completing his training. He succeeds in his battle against Darth Vader on the Death Star 2. He succeeds in all of his actions. He does taste failure. I'm not saying he's a faultless character. Because he does fail in his first fight against Darth Vader. But what he does succeed in in that fight is he succeeds in feeling the light within Vader. The light that no one else can feel. And he feels it, which is a monumental achievement because it's what leads down the path of his father's eventual redemption in the light. When Luke Skywalker fails in his training of Ben Solo, fails him as a teacher, and really aids his overall transition into the dark side, this is the first time that we've seen Luke experience actual 
failure. Now, when I say actual failure, I mean failure on his path to becoming a Jedi. And this is something that we see Luke discuss with Master Yoda, where when Master Yoda visits him as a Force Spirit near the end of The Last Jedi, Yoda tells him that failure is your greatest teacher. So rather than running from his failure, he should learn from his failure and progress on his failure and become better, become that powerful pillar that Rey as his student is supposed to overcome and surpass. And much like his masters, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda, Luke was not non-human. He was not, and when I say human, I mean the sentient emotions of human, the ability to fail, the ability to succeed, much like Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda, the ability to feel anger, the ability to feel fear, the ability to be scared. These are emotions that he possesses. These are the emotions that everyone possesses, and no matter how much we try, no matter how hard we pretend they don't exist, they still exist, and they will always exist. Unlike his Legends counterpart, this iteration of Luke chose to banish away those feelings and keep in line with the true Jedi Order, or at least the Jedi Order that was existing their beliefs during the Clone Wars, the failing beliefs of those Jedi. And it's true when Luke said that he needed to be the last Jedi. He needed to be the last Jedi that followed the beliefs of Obi-Wan, the beliefs of Yoda, that followed the beliefs of the Jedi Order that surpassed him and make way for a new beginning. And this new beginning is Rey. Rey, the only person that can sense the conflict in Kylo. The conflict that Luke doesn't think exists. The conflict that even his mother, near the end of the film, says is gone and that there is no light left within him. But Rey feels that light, just as Luke was the only person to feel that light within Vader. The light that Obi-Wan couldn't feel, the light that Yoda couldn't feel, the light that even Padme, as she gave up the will to live, could not feel anymore within her husband. Luke felt it. Rey has that same feeling now. She's the only one that can feel the conflict within Kylo. She's the only one that can redeem him, if redemption is even possible for him. Exactly like how Luke was the only person that could redeem Darth Vader. Even they make a point of saying that Ahsoka Tano, in her duel with Darth Vader during the Rebels TV show, it was impossible for Ahsoka to redeem her former master. It was impossible for her to ever be that guiding light back. She could not feel the light within him, despite her connection to him. Despite Obi-Wan's connection to Anakin, he couldn't feel that Anakin still existed within Darth Vader. Luke was the only person that could feel that, and now Rey is fulfilling that role with Kylo. And by the end of the film, I feel that Luke realizes this. This is emphasized by in his conversation with Leia when she says that she held out hope for so long, but her son is gone. And Luke responds by saying that no one is ever really gone. I held out hope for so long, but I know my son's gone. No one's ever really gone. In this moment, we see that Luke has regained the pieces of himself that he was missing. Through his interactions with Rey and Yoda's Force Spirit, he's regained that hope that he lost. He's become that Luke from the original trilogy that once again, he is reunited with himself and become a beacon of hope to help light Rey in her future becoming Rey's Kao Sen Dirach as she fulfills her purpose as uh, Satil Shen becoming the Grand Master to lead in a new order of Jedi Knights. And when Kylo asks Luke before their duel 
if Luke has come to redeem him and Luke says, no, this isn't Luke failing him. This is just Luke's understanding that if Kylo is to be redeemed, he is not the person that can do it. He cannot be the beacon to bring Kylo back to the light, to guide his ship home to the light side if there's even a chance for Kylo to be redeemed. Now, I don't know what's in store for us for episode 9, but we're going to definitely see something interesting, I feel, um, as we see most likely Luke's Force Spirit guiding Kylo um, and guiding uh, Rey a little bit. Um, I am interested to see whether or not Rey does redeem Kylo, and that's really what I think is going to happen in the following movie. But that's going to be it for this episode. Make sure to leave me your thoughts down in the comment section down below. And I really want to hear it, so let me know. And thanks for watching. Until next time, guys, this is Chase, signing off.